This is a tutorial for discussion board number three. You'll be reading an excerpt uh, from the Monroe Doctrine. This is a very important aspect of American foreign policy that starts in our era and is still very relevant today, okay? These are the instructions, the Monroe Doctrine, written by James Monroe, John Quincy Adams, 1823. So December 2nd, 1823, Monroe Use, it, use his annual message to Congress for a bold assertion. The American continents are henceforth not to be considered as subjects for future colonization by any European powers. He's telling Europe to stay out. Okay, so understand where we're at here in history. 1823, you've, uh, you're eight years past the end of the War of 1812, so you've established yourself as a country that can stand up to the British. You, you've beaten them now without any help from the French. Of course, the revolution, you beat them with the French help. But now you have the War of 1812, Second War of Independence, and you've beaten them again. So America's feeling pretty proud of themselves and are becoming more powerful. Uh, so Monroe makes the statement that he does not, it, uh, will not allow any longer any, any, any European colonization or any kind of movement in the, in the New World, okay? Uh, Barry, in his routine annual message, Mon Monroe warned European nations that the United States would not tolerate further colonization or puppet monarchs. This address was conceived to meet the major concerns of the moment, but it soon became a watchword of United States policy in the Western Hemisphere. This, uh, this speech became known as the Monroe Doctrine, and it became a cornerstone of American foreign policy like I said, continuing to be relevant today. Secretary of State John Quincy Adams was a co-writer of the document with Monroe, and two things have been uppermost in the minds of Adams and Monroe. Okay, number one, in 1821, the Russian Tsar had, pro had proclaimed that all the area north of the 51st parallel and extending 100 miles in the, in the Pacific would be off limits to non-Russians. So what we're talking about here is Alaska. So don't don't forget the Russians are, Russians Russians are coming over from the Bering Strait and coming down the west coast of, of what today is the United States, the the west coast of North America. Uh, and they make this proclamation that anybody that comes within 100 miles of our of our land, it's off limits to non-Russians. Uh, Adams refused to accept this claim, and he told the Russian minister that the United States would defend the principle that American continents are, are no longer subjects of any new European colonial establishments. So it's the act of the Russians that inspires Monroe to make the stand. The Russians irritate him by saying that you can't come within 100 miles of, of our coastline. And Monroe responds by saying, okay, I'm going to cut off all further expansion in North America, okay? Uh, the second point, revolutions against Spanish rule in Central and South America had been underway for some time, and it seemed possible that Spain and France might seek to reassert European rule in those regions. The British also had an interest in these revolutions, okay? So we have Britain, France, Spain, and Russia with interests in North and South America, so Monroe had had enough and said no more. You know we are the we are the person that carries the big stick over here now, not you. So from this point on, European powers need to stay out of North and South America. So understand this is an audacious statement from a country that was still trying to gain an international identity of their own and not be seen still as a pawn of the British. So the Monroe Doctrine was a direct result of these European inventions. It's a clear that the old world and the new world had different systems and must remain distinct in different spheres. At four basic points. Number one, the United States would not interfere in the internal affairs of or the wars between European powers. Number two, the United States recognized and would not interfere with existing colonies and dependencies in the Western Hemisphere. Number three, the Western Hemisphere was close to future colonization. And number four, any attempt by European power to oppress or control a nation in the Western Hemisphere would be viewed as a hostile act against the United States. In the decades following Monroe's announcement, President John Tyler used the doctrine in 1842 to justify seizing Texas. A Venezuelan newspaper responds with what would become an increasingly bitter theme throughout Latin America. 
beware brothers, the wolf approaches the lamb. And this is, of course, an, you know, a derogatory statement against America. Uh, you know, the, the Latin American countries are saying, we don't need you to help us stay, stay, stay where you're at. But America wants to get involved. So America is beginning to gain a reputation as a world power. So the Monroe Doctrine has been used many times over the years. It was used to justify the isolationist stance that the United States chose as both world wars were beginning the 20th century. Presidents Ronald Reagan and George Bush, in our more recent eras, have used the doctrine in the current day. Uh, it remains a relevant part of America's modern foreign policy. So based on what you've learned in this class of the American experience from colonization to the French and Indian Wars, the American Revolution, and the War of 1812, what evidence have you found to justify America's bold assertion that all European countries and Russia stay out of the New World? Had America earned the right to refuse to allow foreign intervention in North and South America? Okay, okay so the instructions are the same as before. Uh, Please post an original response, um, including your reactions. Uh, make a valid statement or argument. Be original. Let me take out these dates because they are not not relevant to our our assignment uh, right now. Okay, give me one second here. Uh, so the instructions remain the same as before. You're you're going to post a a, a main point, and that's going to be four paragraphs long. And you're going to post a uh, two responses to your fellow students that are going to, going to be at least two paragraphs long. Okay, so don't forget that. Uh, don't forget to make your paragraphs the, the proper length. But, but most importantly, don't forget that we have two post dates for discussion boards. That this will post on a Friday. You then have the entire week till the following Friday, a week from that same day, to post your main uh, your main argument on that Friday. Okay, so you have eight days essentially. It starts Friday at midnight and you have all the way to the end of the following Friday. So eight days to get your initial main argument posted. Okay, so why do I do that on Friday? If we did, if I had it, just everyone do it on Monday, there, would, there wouldn't be any posts for anybody to respond to. Okay, so you post your first post on Friday and then three days later is Monday and you respond to two, not one, two of your classmates posts. So again, don't just simply agree with what they said. Give a response based on the knowledge you've gained from reading this excerpt in the class and the reading the book and the films and the lectures and educated reply. You're gaining education about this era and you're becoming knowledgeable about the you know policies that went on there. So don't forget your responses need to be two full paragraphs each. You know, one sentence or two sentences with space between is not not full paragraphs. Okay, full two full paragraphs. And that's the following Monday, of course, like I said, three days later, okay? Uh, grading, 15 points for your original post, five each for both of your responses. Uh, total, total points is 25 points. Uh, so points taken off for unoriginality or not making a valid point or argument. Again, simply agreeing with what you read is not a relevant post. If you miss the main post and, and respond to the two responses, you'll, you'll get 10 points and vice versa. If you don't respond but you post your main post, you get 15 but again, don't, don't leave easy points on the table. This this class is a race to the end to see who has the most points. Well, on some level anyway. The more points, the better your grade. These these aren't difficult uh, points to gain, so don't procrastinate, okay? Again, uh, always with discussion boards, two post dates. The, the Friday, the week after it posts, and the two responses the following Monday. So please vote because I use these recordings for other classes and they have different due dates than you do I don't have the date on here okay but that's okay go to canvas assignment discussion board three open it and you'll see the due dates and I'm certainly um, giving you enough warnings in, in my welcome uh, videos uh, each week so, so you know that these things are coming okay okay that's all I got guys thank you